Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. Uh, we will look at the problem for exam MLC, uh, at the problem for exam MLC today. If you want to find out um, who I am and more information about me, you can go to this to this website, smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. I use this redirect um, service, smarturl.it, um, and then after you put a word and then it redirects you to things that relate to that word. The, the word is something easy to remember that um, then you can keep in your mind for redirection to a website you want to talk about. So for example, this this um, channel with practice problems that I'm showing you can be found by going to smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. And if you want to find the actuarial program at Illinois State University, which I direct, go to smarturl.it forward slash actuary. And if you'd like to support our students, go to smarturl.it forward slash ISU actuary donate. But I'll give you a little secret. If you go to smarturl.it forward slash feed a starving actuary, that actually also works. And yes, um, well, um, university education is expensive, so it would be nice if you could consider helping our students. Any amount um, will work, and as Edmund Burke said, um, there could be no greater mistake than um, uh, to do nothing just because you, you think that uh, the thing that you can do is very small. I don't remember the exact quotation, but he said something like that. And if it was Edmund Burke, then of course you, you should always pay attention to what he said. Well, I felt so bad that I didn't remember the exact quote. I looked it up. Uh, so here is Edmund for you. He said, no one could make a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. It's something that you could use in your studies because Every time you have a chance, you should be studying. And if you can do only a little, it will add up. Study hard. You'll be grateful to yourself down the road when you pass all exams. So this is uh, Spring 2017 course MLC exam uh, problem number 10 in multiple choice section. For a fully continuous whole life insurance of uh, 10,000 issued to a 40 year old, you are given the following information. Premiums are paid at the rate of 100 per year. Uh, the force of interest is 5%. The force of mortality at age 70.5 is 0 0.038, which is uh, pretty high um, for age 70.5, although yes, mortality increases at that age. Uh, for t equal to 30.5, now the person was 40 when the insurance was issued, so this t equal to 30.5 refers to policy duration of 30.5, and the person is 70.5 at that time, so this time is the time for which we have the force of mortality given. Uh, the derivative with respect to t of the reserve at time t, the reserve for this policy is 292. And you are supposed to find the reserve at time 30.5. Well then, um, all the data that we're given um, is actually f exactly for that time. Policy duration 30.5 when the person insured this 70.5. Uh, okay, so the one thing that I want you to notice immediately is that there is a derivative with respect to time of the reserve in this, and of course, this should immediately remind you of Thiel's equation, and that's what we're going to use. So, here it is I'm using somewhat old-fashioned notation, um, but um, whatever notation you use, it says um, that the derivative with respect to time of the reserve is the force of mortality multiplied by the reserve plus the rate of payment of the premium continuously paid minus the benefit payment continues 
version of it, minus the reserve, so net amount at risk. This uh, benefit minus uh, net amount, death benefit minus the reserve is net amount at risk, times the force of mortality. And you should just notice this, that the reserve changes because it earns interest, because the premium comes in, but it also changes to a negative, it declines because uh, there is a payment of death benefit when the person dies, but the the net payment out is um, the loss is only um, the, the net amount at risk, the death benefit minus the reserve. And you might want to say, well, but 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 the reserve is paid out too when the person dies. That's true, but you don't keep the reserve for a person who dies. After the person dies, there is no more reserve. And so in the new reserve, the people who already died are not included. So the kind of a net take amount taken out for the future reserves is the net amount at risk. So we plug in all the numbers that we have and we get 292 equals 0.05 times the reserve at policy duration 30.5 plus 100 minus 10,000, the death benefit, minus the reserve at policy duration 30.5, the whole thing multiplied by the force of mortality. And this is now a, a linear equation in which the only unknown is the reserve itself. We solve it for the reserve and it is equal to um, 6,500. Please remember that this is copyrighted material and um, that exam problems from Society of Actuaries belong to Society of Actuaries and they're reproduced with permission.